Welcome back everyone, Zaf here for yet another Soul Leveling Rise video. For today's video, I am covering the Battlefield Chaos. I haven't seen many guys on this just yet, so I do want to cover some important tips that will likely help you out to get all the way to Wave 10. I just completed it just for testing purposes. So as you see, Wave 10 is completed, and it's honestly not that hard to do. Even though we have a very large damage deficit, let me actually go in and buy a key real quick, just so I can show you what it's like. I believe I'm 200,000 combat power under, so anyone can really do it. You just need the right build, that's all that's really required. Otherwise, you won't have a good time, because a lot of these bosses will one-shot you. That's the main issue, so you just want to try and survive as long as you can, and let your hunters do the work. Because I can tell you right now, a 200,000 power deficit is no joke. They will beat you up very easily. And I do want to remind everyone, if you want to take one thing away from this video, your hunter placement does matter. This is how they spawn in. And I actually found having Lysia to the right versus the left is much better. If you have her placed here, it will actually mess up your run a lot. It makes the run much harder. And I will explain all that in a second. Now the reason why I'm suddenly making a Battlefield Chaos video is because of creator codes. So it is part of one of the missions I do need to complete, mission number 3, Battlefield of Chaos strategy video. And once I do complete this mission, the devs will provide me thousands and thousands of codes to give out to the viewers, in this case 5 resistance codes and 3 gate keys, which is very very nice. So don't forget to support us on that Marvel Supporter program, this is the easiest way for me to send out codes. Especially if you're paid to win, or even if you spend one dollar, you will automatically get a code. That's how easy it is. So once you spend and accumulate points, I can automatically send you codes. It'll take a few hours once you make a purchase, for example, but I do check routinely and I send them out. And also, don't worry, if you're free to play, I send out codes to you as well. It is random, we have a lot of supporters, but just stay tuned and you potentially get a code. And also... A um, shout out to Chad Dante for being first commenter on our last video. Here's your shout out and enjoy your very exclusive Discord role. So let's start out with the build I'm using. This build is honestly very simple. I'm using artifacts everyone should have. I'm not using any of the new artifact sets just to make things fair for anyone who is free to play who hasn't beat normal Vulcan. So for example, on Sung Jin Woo, I went with the one to kill set. Let me just reset here. I went with the set because we use our ultimate a lot, so getting a 40% cooldown reduction is very, very vital. Same with a damage bonus to our ultimate. There are multiple enemies on wave 10, for example, so using your ultimate is super, super helpful. You're able to hit the whole map at once, making for a much easier time. Now you can, of course, use other effect sets, such as the toughness set. This is always a solid set. You can also, if you want, go with solid analysis, this isn't too bad, getting a damage increase against target in the break state, which does happen a lot. I would say over half the targets in the battlefield chaos can be broken, so this is useful. On top of getting additional effects, so a 30% increase to break effects, very, very useful. And also, I just realized there's a space missing here, so maybe the devs can fix that. Anyways, so we have soul analysis, we also have the toughness set. Now, if you have beaten normal Vulcan, you can also go for this set here, the Curse Set. This is very good, where you're getting that stacking effect, and these matches do last some time. So this is the next best set you can use, obviously. So those first sets on Sung Jin are obviously very good. And when it comes to its accessories, I just went with the Expert Set. Very, very simple and nice. Getting that stacking effect every time you land a crit. It does stack up to 100 times for a 1.6% attack bonus which does amount to a lot, especially in this long drawn out battle. So this is a fantastic set you can use. And of course the burning set effect again, 8 set effect is very good. You can run that as well. Executioner isn't bad as well. Those are probably the sets I would go for in Sung Jin Woo. I think that's basically all, and I guess if you have Concentration of Firepower, that's not too bad as well. All these sets do work. You do get a CDR reduction, which is pretty decent, considering some of these skills we do use. So again, those are your main options. I went with Expert because I love, love, love the stacking effect. Super simple to get off when you have 4 equipped. So that's my main choice. But again, my real main choice will be Burning Curse Set. Just because it's so good. But I do want to make this guide accessible to everyone. So we have no new artifacts. Now, since the recommended element is water here, obviously we're going for all water hunters. Now, Jiwoo is honestly a must here. 
she provides so much break, and in general, when you're running the Battlefield Chaos, you want to make sure you have at least one, if not two breakers on your team. It makes for such an easy battle. Breaks on top of breaks, lets you deal more damage, immobilizing the enemies as well, making for a very good time. Now for any water runs, Jiwoo obviously and Alicia are fantastic. Malin works so so good with Alicia, but if you don't have Malin and you have someone like Min, you can swap them in. Though I'm not sure about how effective it would be, Malin is obviously such a fantastic support for Alicia. They go hand in hand, so up to you what you want to do, but make sure to have at least one breaker. That is a must because Sung Jun Woo cannot break by himself. He can of course, but he doesn't have enough to get as many breaks off as he normally would if he had a hunter with multiple break skills. And for your shadow, depending on who you're running, you obviously want to run Tusk if you have Alicia on your team. I'm pretty sure Alicia does the bulk of the damage on this run. Honestly, Jun Woo is basically a support here, letting your hunters do the work, and I will cover this in depth in a second. You can also use someone like Igris, no problems there, or even Blades, but I think Igris would be better, considering you will be running hunters who won't potentially scale off attack. So Igris and Tusk will be your number one choices. Tusk mainly for just Alicia, because her core attack damage is off the charts. And I should say your artifact choices are just standard. So for your breaker, you don't have to run toughness set, for example. You can use the solid analysis set as well. That would actually be more ideal, because it provides a higher break amount, depending on the amount of weakness. So do keep that in mind. I just have the toughness set equipped on Jiwoo, because I can't be bothered to change him out. It just costs too much gold these days. I hope the devs remove that. And then I also want execution on her. Super simple. You don't want to go with something like Berserker just because Jiwoo does shield, meaning she might not get that damage off. And Alicia sets her standard, same with Malin. Nothing special here. But when it comes to your skill choices, in most cases, you always want to run Armor Break with the designated elemental type. So in this case, we're running Water. This is generally ideal because of the Almighty Break super super overpowered and for your second skill it's up to you what you want to run in this case i usually go with death stance but because we don't have the water elemental here i just went with multi strike going with the water rune though i don't think the break effect is too much of a difference here depending on which sense you use of course if you use salt analysis on Jin Woo, you should probably go for the right elemental type giving you more break but again these two skills work fantastically with armor break and I'm just looking around and Crushing Blow does work. It does provide a decent break depending on which rune you're using, like this one here. But again, ideally, you want to go for these three skills. They just provide so much break. You can also use Commander's Touch. It's not a bad skill. You can vacuum the men using this rune here. And then you can deal more break all at once to all the targets. And damage, of course, up to you. I know a lot of people do use this. I personally don't. Just because I prefer having more break on my kit. But again, totally up to you. That is an option. You can use Commander's Touch and Armor Break, or Armor Break and Death Sense and Multi Strike, depending on what works best with your playstyle. Now we covered runes, let's go to Blessing Stones. Blessing Stones are fairly easy here. I go with Boss Slayer because, well, you're facing multiple bosses, so this is a beautiful choice. Same with Pulverize. If you have the Legendary or Epic version, oh my goodness, it is so powerful, giving you more break effects on top of dealing more damage to targets in the break state. Super, super OP. Weakness detection, of course. You're getting the damage bonus, since you will generally be using weapons that have an elemental type advantage. We're using Grimoire in this case, so we obviously end up going with weakness detection. And other skills you can use, I honestly use daily quest completion, just to save myself time if I randomly get hit by the target, since in most cases you are going to get one-shotted, which is very, very painful. So keep that in mind, you can definitely run this. And of course, other artifacts you can run would be Double-Edged Sword, that works fine. Same with Bloodlust, these are all decent. You can also use Reawakening to get a CDR reduction. Lots of options here, there is no one best choice. Just use the artifacts that are best for your account. In my case, I'm using these. I found them to be the most helpful in terms of this run. So I guess that was everything, and for weapons, Honestly speaking, in most cases, I'll run one weapon that has the elemental type advantage, and then I'll use Plum as well, because Plum is just so, so good. You get a stacking effect to your crit damage, getting an attack increase and crit rate increase, multiple effects you can use, especially the A1 bonus here, getting a skill damage buff of 32%, 
which is honestly quite vital, especially if you use Grimoire. Using the skill and aiming it correctly, hitting all the enemies at once, is a must-have in my opinion. So this makes for a fantastic combo, plum and any elemental type of advantage weapon will set you up for a very good time. But of course, you don't have to use Plum, you can use Grimoire and Scatty for this one, for example, if you have your Scatty advanced up. So don't be too focused on Plum, you can just focus your efforts on the elemental type advantage. Okay, so that should be everything covered, I don't think I missed anything, yep. Yeah. And Hunter Choices again, you want to have one Breaker or two and one Damage Dealer, or one Breaker, one Support and one Damage Dealer, that's the general best setup you can use, regardless of how much power you are missing, you don't have to worry too much. Now let's go into a run, and I'll show you how all this works, giving you some tips where I can. Obviously my run isn't going to be perfect, these runs are a little bit rushed, but anyways let's just hop right into it. Alright, so here's our replay, making things very easy to commentate on top of. So we're just going to spawn in, and the first tip I do want to provide you is you have two options. You can actually use your shadows right away, it kind of does distract the enemies, that makes it so your hunters can't die, and you can't get any damage dealt to you, depending on how far you're trying to advance up in waves. But again, up to you. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. Just depends on how I start off. So you generally want to reset your battles until the target does try to attack you. That way you can get Shadow Step off. So in this case, obviously no Shadow Step. We're just going to use our break skills. Alessia does freeze the target. So make sure you use your break skills as soon as possible. That way you can break the target and deal even more damage, there we go. This is why we run someone like Jiwoo, you need at least one breaker to break the targets right away, making for a very easy run. And what I try to do here, is once the targets do pile up, I'll use my first skill, in this case being Plum, I'll also use my Shadows, and then I'll try to navigate my next skill depending on what it is. If it's AoE like Grimoire, I'll make sure to try my best to hit all the targets, You'll see here if I use it, give me one second here, there we go. So I'm hitting multiple targets here, the orc, the spider, and potentially the spider back there. So we're hitting every single target of our skill, which is exactly what you want to do. So you get all these skill effects off, I believe it's called erosion on this one, giving us a damage bonus, which is vital, vital, vital for beating enemies very quickly. So we're just going to apply that, more break coming in, nothing fancy. And you do want to try to save your break skills for any targets that have yet to be broken. So do keep that in mind, but I know it's hard not using the skills. They deal damage and apply effects. And I also always keep an eye out for these red circles. That's when you know you want to dodge. So we have one shadow step here. We're going to apply it. We obviously found the Great Arachnid. And some of these bosses do refresh their break counter. And this is exactly why we use armor break. Look at the break chunk there. Basically 100% of the break counter gone in a second and easy pickings we're just dealing damage and i know my ultimate is up sometimes i use it right away it's kind of up to you when you want to use it if the target's already dying you don't have to use it you can just save it for the next battle up to you sometimes i do just save it depends how many targets are on the map if it's just one and already dying i don't use it but if there are multiple i will use it anyway so let's see if i use it here and no i don't because it's a very easy battle there and yep let's move on to the next match we did save our ultimate which we will use right here so we are going to wait for the demon here to use its skill that way we can shadow step and depending on where Lysia is spawning from she will freeze the targets making it so you can't use your dodge efficiently I absolutely hate that I don't know if anyone else has experienced it you're ready to dodge the enemy's attack, but an Alicia comes in, freezes them, and it just ruins your tempo. That's why I like her in the third spot. I feel like she freezes the initial targets less often. So as you see here, she isn't freezing the lower demon, or upper demon, yeah, top demon, my bad. <laughs> I guess I just roasted them by accident. In our case, they're weak, so I'll call them the low-ranking demon. So you saw that we use our shadow step, and I know Plum skills on cooldown, which is fine. You can still use Grimoire. You will lose out on a bit of damage, but since the target is in the break state, you will deal less damage regardless, and you saw what I did there. I'm just going to rewind the tape here just to show you how important aiming is. So when I use Grimoire, I do lock onto the target. That way I hit both enemies, dealing as much damage as possible. That's vital if you have a power deficit. And here I can potentially use my ultimate if I decide to, but for some reason I love saving it. And in this case, I actually save it for the right occasion. I'm using my plum skill. That way I get a skill damage bonus. So here I should use my ultimate skill 
Do I use it or am I noob? Yeah, there we go, yes. Zaf is a pro, he uses ultimate skill after getting the skill damage buff at 30%. Exactly what I want to see, good job. And you saw there we're hitting both enemies, dealing a ton of damage. Though you want to potentially, depending on how the battle is going, save your ultimate for when the target is in the break state. But it doesn't matter too much, you will deal more damage, making the run easier. But that could potentially cost you to run. Since the ultimate cooldown for me is so low, I don't mind using it right away. In this case, I use it ASAP once I got some buffs off. That being from Grimoire, Plum, and Shadow Step. So we're just going to continue here, deal as much damage as we can, use our break skills, dodging when we can, and getting Shadow Step off if that's possible. And there we go, the target is broken. I'm going to position again for Grimoire, which I should do in a moment here, dashing ahead of them, I hope. And using Grimoire, I guess I'm not using Grimoire, that's fine. Okay, I use it now since they died, that's okay. But again, we're never wasting a Grimoire. If you ever want to use an AoE skill, I know I've said it multiple times, but make sure you use your Grimoire skill on multiple enemies. Do not waste it. It's an AoE skill for a reason, and it provides a fantastic damage buff. So we're just going to continue here, nothing fancy. Dodging skills, applying freezes though. I did use Armor Break there, I don't recommend it. The cooldown is a bit long, so you might not have it up for the next battle, which can be a bit detrimental for the run, but that's okay. Now for our next battle, super simple, whenever you see a demon, you want to know for a fact you'll be using Shadow Step, because you can see the ring right here. Whenever you see a red ring, you know you're in store for a good time, an easy evasion, easy Shadow Step and tons of damage, so you saw their evasion, and we use Shadow Step. And it applied, perfect, though it applied to the other target. You can see the effect isn't here, it was actually on the panfer, whatever it's called. So we had it applied there, that's fine. We can break the target. The panfer shouldn't really be your focus, because your ultimate and AoE skills should actually take care of it. Their HP is low, some of these targets will have very low HP, that your ultimate and grimoire, for example, can take care of, so don't worry too much. You just want to focus on the main targets that need their break counter reduced, so you see here, we're just having a very standard run, and now it's called the Blue Fang Razan. So you saw there, their HP is super low by now, using our AoE and our Hunters to take care of it. So we're just going to finish them off, and here we see what I'm doing. I'm making sure my Grimoire hits all three targets. Super, super simple, but we got hit, and that's fine, as long as the skill effect gets applied. And don't worry too much, I know the targets move. Like the demon here, it's hopping around, dodging our skill, that's fine. As long as you can land the skill on one or two enemies at least, you're doing a good job. So you see here, I'm just running around waiting for my CDRs. You don't have to auto necessarily. Just like your hunters take care of it sometimes. You don't want to die. Your hunters can survive much better than Jinwoo. If they die, you can take over. But if you die, it's basically game over. So that's why you want to be careful. And I do want to note in the later stages, there is a lot of AoE moves as you saw there, so be careful. That's why I carry around daily quest completion. So if I do get hit by accident, I won't die right away. I'll have that invincibility period and I'll get my HP recovered, which has come in clutch every now and then, but you should be fine. You don't need it too often, but there are those times where it does come in very, very handy. And you see here, the run is basically fairly simple. You do let your hunters do most of the work. So as you see, I'm running here. I don't want to die unnecessarily. And yet that was a bad move. I should have stuck to my own vice. Just run and dodge your targets. If you're very low on HP, just let your hunters do the work. Add in your support skills when needed. Provide them additional break, etc. You don't want to die. That'll ruin the run. And your hunters will become very, very disappointed. But yeah, that should be the run here. Hopefully you got at least some tips from this. You do want to make sure you're using Plum, Grimoire, etc. correctly. That way you get their skill effects off ASAP and you don't just waste them. You want to deal as much damage as possible. That way you can get the highest wave run. Otherwise, well, you'll be wasting your daily keys. Though I think the rewards for wave 7 to 10 are basically the same. I could be wrong here. I don't recall ever getting better rewards doing 10 or 7 because I do sometimes like doing stage 7 just on auto when I don't have time. But yeah, I don't think there's much of a difference. I'm pretty sure they all provide the tier 3 reward, that being the tier 3 gems. But yeah, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, drop a like. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and do support us on Netmarble Supporter Program. We will have those new codes coming out very soon. So make sure you're supporting. That way you'll get the code sent to you right away. 
This was Zaf signing out.